Part 1. August Fate smiled and destiny laughed as she came to my cradle. Natalie Merchant, Wonder Ordinary I know I'm not an ordinary ten-year-old kid. I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream. I ride my bike. I play ball. I have an Xbox. Stuff like that makes me ordinary, I guess. And I feel ordinary inside. But I know ordinary kids don't make other ordinary kids run away screaming in playgrounds. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at wherever they go. If I found a magic lamp and I could have one wish, I would wish that I had a normal face that no one ever noticed at all. I would wish that I could walk down the street without people seeing me and then doing that look-away thing. Here's what I think. The only reason I'm not ordinary is that no one else sees me that way. But I'm kind of used to how I look by now. I know how to pretend I don't see the faces people make. We've all gotten pretty good at that sort of thing. Me, Mom and Dad, Via. Actually, I, I take that back. Via's not so good at it. She can get really annoyed when people do something rude. Like, for instance, one time in the playground, some other kids made some noises. I don't even know what the noises were exactly because I, I didn't hear them myself. But Via heard, and she just started yelling at the kids. And that's the way she is. I'm not that way. Via doesn't see me as ordinary. She says she does. But if I were ordinary, she wouldn't feel like she needs to protect me as much. And Mom and Dad don't see me as ordinary either. They see me as extraordinary. I think the only person in the world who realizes how ordinary I am is me. My name is August, by the way. I won't describe what I look like. Whatever you're thinking is probably worse. Why I didn't go to school Next week, I start fifth grade. Since I've never been to a real school before, I'm pretty much totally and completely petrified. People think I haven't gone to school because of the way I look, but it's not that. It's because of all the surgeries I've had, 27 since I was born. The bigger ones happened before I was even four years old, so I don't remember those. But I've had two or three surgeries every year since then, some big and some small. And because I'm little for my age and I have some other medical mysteries that doctors never really figured out, I used to get sick a lot. That's why my parents decided it was better if I didn't go to school. I'm much stronger now, though. The last surgery I had was eight months ago, and I probably won't have to have any more for another couple of years. Mom homeschools me. She used to be a children's book illustrator. She draws really great fairies and mermaids. Her boy stuff isn't so hot, though. She once tried to draw me a Darth Vader, but it ended up looking like some weird mushroom-shaped robot. I haven't seen her draw anything in a long time. I think she's too busy taking care of me and Via. I can't say I always wanted to go to school, because that wouldn't be exactly true. What I wanted was to go to school, but only if I could be like every other kid going to school. Have lots of friends and hang out after school and stuff like that. I have a few really good friends now. Christopher is my best friend, followed by Zachary and Alex. We've known each other since we were babies. And since they've always known me the way I am, they're used to me. When we were little, we used to have play dates all the time. But then Christopher moved to Bridgeport in Connecticut. That's more than an hour away from where I live in North River Heights which is at the top tip of Manhattan. And Zachary and Alex started going to school. It's funny, even though Christopher's the one who moved far away, I still see him more than I see Zachary and Alex. They have all these new friends now. If we bump into each other on the street, they're still nice to me, though. They always say hello. I have other friends, too, but not as good as Christopher and Zach and Alex were. For instance, Zach and Alex always invited me to their birthday parties when we were little, but Joel and Eamon and Gabe never did. Emma invited me once, but I haven't seen her in a long time. And of course, I always go to Christopher's birthday. Maybe I'm making too big a deal about birthday parties. 
How I Came to Life. I like when mom tells this story because it makes me laugh so much. It's not funny in the way a joke is funny, but when mom tells it, Via and I just start cracking up. So when I was in my mom's stomach, no one had any idea I would come out looking the way I look. Mom had had Via four years before, and that had been such a walk in the park, mom's expression, that there was no reason to run any special tests. About two months before I was born, the doctors realized there was something wrong with my face, but they didn't think it was going to be bad. They told mom and dad I had a cleft palate and some other stuff going on, and they called it small anomalies. There were two nurses in the delivery room the night I was born. One was very nice and sweet. The other one, mom said, did not seem at all nice or sweet. She had very big arms, and here comes the funny part. She kept farting, like she'd bring mom some ice chips and then fart. She'd check mom's blood pressure and fart. Mom said it was unbelievable because the nurse never even said excuse me. Meanwhile, mom's regular doctor wasn't on duty that night. So mom got stuck with this cranky kid doctor she and dad nicknamed Doogie after some old TV show or something. They didn't actually call him that to his face. But mom says that even though everyone in the room was kind of grumpy, dad kept making her laugh all night long. When I came out of mom's stomach, she said the whole room got very quiet. Mom didn't even get a chance to look at me because the nice nurse immediately rushed me out of the room. Dad was in such a hurry to follow her that he dropped the video camera, which broke into a million pieces. And then Mom got very upset and tried to get out of bed to see where they were going. But the farting nurse put her very big arms on Mom to keep her down in the bed. They were practically fighting because Mom was hysterical, and the farting nurse was yelling at her to stay calm, and then they both started screaming for the doctor. But guess what? He had fainted right on the floor. So when the farting nurse saw that he had fainted, she started pushing him with her foot to get him to wake up, yelling at him the whole time. What kind of doctor are you? What kind of doctor are you? Get up, get up. And then all of a sudden, she let off the biggest, loudest, smelliest fart in the history of farts. Mom thinks it was actually the fart that finally woke the doctor up. Anyway, when mom tells this story, she acts out all the parts, including the farting noises, and it is so, 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 so funny. Mom says the farting nurse turned out to be a very nice woman. She stayed with mom the whole time, didn't leave her side, even after dad came back and the doctors told them how sick I was. Mom remembers exactly what the nurse whispered in her ear when the doctor told her I probably wouldn't live through the night. Everyone born of God overcometh the world. And the next day, after I had lived through the night, it was that nurse who held Mom's hand when they brought her to meet me for the first time. Mom says by then they had told her all about me. She had been preparing herself for the seeing of me. But she says that when she looked down into my tiny, mushed-up face for the first time, all she could see was how pretty my eyes were. Mom is beautiful, by the way, and Dad is handsome. Via is pretty, in case you were wondering. Christopher's House I was really bummed when Christopher moved away three years ago. We were both around seven then. We used to spend hours playing with our Star Wars action figures and dueling with our lightsabers. I miss that. Last spring, we drove over to Christopher's house in Bridgeport. Me and Christopher were looking for snacks in the kitchen, and I heard Mom talking to Lisa, Christopher's mom, about my going to school in the fall. I had never, ever heard her mention school before. What are you talking about, I said. Mom looked surprised, like she hadn't meant for me to hear that. You should tell him what you've been thinking, Isabel, Dad said. He was on the other side of the living room talking to Christopher's dad. We should talk about this later, said Mom. No, I want to know what you were talking about, I answered. Don't you think you're ready for school, Augie, Mom said. No, I said. I don't either, said Dad. Then that's it, case closed, I said, shrugging. 
and I sat in her lap like I was a baby. I just think you need to learn more than I can teach you, Mom said. I mean, come on, Augie. You know how bad I am at fractions. What school, I said. I already felt like crying. Beecher Prep, right by us. Wow, that's a great school, Augie, said Lisa, patting my knee. Why not via school, I said. That's too big, Mom answered. I don't think that would be a good fit for you. I don't want to, I said. I admit, I made my voice sound a little babyish. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, Dad said, coming over and lifting me out of Mom's lap. He carried me over to sit on his lap on the other side of the sofa. We won't make you do anything you don't want to do. But it would be good for him, Nate, Mom said. Not if he doesn't want to, answered Dad, looking at me. Not if he's not ready. I saw Mom look at Lisa, who reached over and squeezed her hand. You guys will figure it out, she said to Mom. You always have. Let's just talk about it later, said Mom. I could tell she and Dad were going to get in a fight about it. I wanted Dad to win the fight. Though a part of me knew Mom was right. And the truth is, she really was terrible at fractions. Driving. It was a long drive home. I fell asleep in the back seat like I always do. My head on Via's lap like she was my pillow. A towel wrapped around the seatbelt so I wouldn't drool all over her. Via fell asleep too. And Mom and Dad talked quietly about grown-up things I didn't care about. I don't know how long I was sleeping, but when I woke up, there was a full moon outside the car window. It was a purple night, and we were driving on a highway full of cars. And then I heard Mom and Dad talking about me. We can't keep protecting him, Mom whispered to Dad, who was driving. We can't just pretend he's going to wake up tomorrow, and this isn't going to be his reality. Because it is, Nate, and we have to help him learn to deal with it. We can't just keep avoiding situations that... So sending him off to middle school like a lamb to the slaughter, Dad answered angrily. But he didn't even finish his sentence because he saw me in the mirror looking up. What's a lamb to the slaughter, I asked sleepily. Go back to sleep, Augie, Dad said softly. Everyone will stare at me at school, I said, suddenly crying. Honey, Mom said. She turned around in the front seat and put her hand on my hand. You know, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But we spoke to the principal there and told him about you, and he really wants to meet you. What did you tell him about me? How funny you are, how kind and smart. When I told him you read Dragon Rider when you were six, he was like, Wow, I have to meet this kid. Did you tell him anything else, I said? Mom smiled at me. Her smile kind of hugged me. I told him about all your surgeries and how brave you are, she said. So he knows what I look like, I asked. Well, we brought pictures from last summer in Montauk, Dad said. We showed him pictures of the whole family and that great shot of you holding that flounder on the boat. You were there too? I have to admit, I felt a little disappointed that he was a part of this. We both talked to him, yes, Dad said. He's a really nice man. You would like him, Mom added. Suddenly, it felt like they were on the same side. Wait, so when did you meet him, I said. He took us on a tour of the school last year, said Mom. Last year, I said. So you've been thinking about this for a whole year, and you didn't tell me? We didn't know if you'd even get in, Augie, answered Mom. It's a very hard school to get into. There's a whole admissions process. I didn't see the point in telling you and having you get all worked up about it unnecessarily. But you're right, Augie. We should have told you when we found out last month that you got in, said Dad. In hindsight, sighed Mom. Yes. I guess. Did that lady who came to the house that time have something to do with this, I said? The one that gave me that test? Yes, actually, said Mom, looking guilty. Yes. 
You told me it was an IQ test, I said. I know. Well, that was a white lie, she answered. It was a test you needed to take to get into the school. You did very well on it, by the way. So you lied, I said. A white lie, but yes. Sorry, she said, trying to smile, but when I didn't smile back, she turned around in her seat and faced forward. What's a lamb to the slaughter, I said. Mom sighed and gave Daddy a look. I shouldn't have said that, Dad said, looking at me in the rearview mirror. It's not true. Here's the thing. Mommy and I love you so much we want to protect you any way we can. It's just sometimes we want to do it in different ways. I don't want to go to school, I answered, folding my arms. It would be good for you, Augie, said Mom. Maybe I'll go next year, I answered, looking out the window. This year would be better, Augie, said Mom. You know why? Because you'll be going into fifth grade, and that's the first year of middle school for everyone. You won't be the only new kid. I'll be the only kid who looks like me, I said. I'm not going to say it won't be a big challenge for you because you know better than that, she answered. But it'll be good for you, Augie. You'll make lots of friends, and you'll learn things you'd never learn with me. She turned in her seat again and looked at me. When we took the tour, you know what they had in their science lab? A little baby chick that was just hatching out of its egg. It was so cute. Augie, it actually kind of reminded me of you when you were a little baby, with those big brown eyes of yours. I usually love when they talk about when I was a baby. Sometimes I want to curl up into a little tiny ball and let them hug me and kiss me all over. I miss being a baby, not knowing stuff. But I wasn't in the mood for that now. I don't want to go, I said. How about this? Can you at least meet Mr. Tushman before making up your mind, Mom asked. Mr. Tushman, I said. He's the principal, answered Mom. Mr. Tushman, I repeated. I know, right, Dad answered, smiling and looking at me in the rearview mirror. Can you believe that name, Augie? I mean, who on earth would ever agree to have a name like Mr. Tushman? I smiled, even though I didn't want to let them see me smile. Dad was the one person in the world who could make me laugh, no matter how much I didn't want to laugh. Dad always made everyone laugh. Augie, you know you should go to that school, just so you can hear his name said over the loudspeaker, Dad said excitedly. Can you imagine how funny that would be? Hello, hello, paging Mr. Tushman. He was using a fake high old lady voice. Hi, Mr. Tushman. I see you're running a little behind today. Did your car get rear-ended again? What a bum rap. I started laughing, not even because I thought he was being that funny, but because I wasn't in the mood to stay mad anymore. It could be worse, though, Dad continued in his normal voice. Mommy and I had a professor in college called Miss Butt. Mom was laughing now, too. Is that for real, I said? Roberta Butt, Mom answered, raising her hand as if to swear. Bobby Butt. She had huge cheeks, said Dad. Nate, said Mom. What? She had big cheeks is all I'm saying. Mom laughed and shook her head at the same time. Hey, hey, I know, said Dad excitedly. Let's fix them up on a blind date. Can you imagine? Miss Butt, meet Mr. Tushman. Mr. Tushman, here's Miss Butt. They could get married and have a bunch of little tushies. Poor Mr. Tushman, answered Mom, shaking her head. Augie hasn't even met the man yet, Nate. Who's Mr. Tushman, Via said groggily. She had just woken up. He's the principal of my new school, I answered.